folks, we're back once again with a new guest on our show, The Why Jesus Show. Let's start off today's show by meeting our guest for today, Jibin from Dubai. Welcome Jibin to our Why Jesus Show. Thank you very much. Can we head start by hearing a little bit of a self-introduction from your end? My name is Jibin and uh, I'm basically from Dubai. Uh, I've been staying there from, I've been born and brought up there and I've been residing there. My native place is from Kerala. And I'm from Thiruvallad, I'm from Patanadatta district. And I'm, I'm very privileged to come to this show. Thank you for coming, Jibin. Now, Jibin, what are you currently doing here? Like, I completed my mechanical engineering, my bachelor's of engineering. And right now I'm an engineer, mechanical engineer in Dubai. I've been working for past six years. And by God's grace, it's going well. Now, why did you take up engineering? Well, uh, the thing is that I was not interested in medicine. And, and I was a bit creative and maybe Max and physics was good for me. So I decided I'll go to engineering and I do not regret my choice. I'm totally happy with my work. Now you did mention by God's grace. So you seem to sound like you believe in God. What role does spirituality have in your life? God's grace is it's something that is with me and with everyone, but few of us recognize it. What we do and what we, what, we are about, what we have done and what we do and what we are about to do. Everything, there is a God's plan and there is a purpose. And most of us don't fail to recognize it. Most of us fail to recognize what God can do for you or where is God in your life. And uh, for me, the experiences from my childhood, I've been part of a wonderful fellowship. And from there, I've come to know about God. And I, de I definitely believe that there, God has a plan in everyone's life. And God is a part of everyone's life. Just we need to realize it at some point of time. That yes, there is, someone, there is God with me. And God is always with me. And for, uh, it depends on the time frame. Some, uh, we can come to, we get to know it when, when we are young. Maybe when we are old. Or any, when we are, most times, people come to know at a critical junction of their life. Like when they are in the deepest problems or in the troubles. They come to know that there is God. And they reach, they, for that moment, there is no one else in their life that they will be like, their friends won't be there, their family won't be there, they will be alone. And at that point of time, you'll come to know God. Now, Jibin, did you have a particular point in your life where you had that self-realization? See, actually, uh, from my childhood, uh, I've, I've been based, uh, I'm going to church, and then I've gone to a wonderful fellowship, as I mentioned. And there I have been having experiences of God, but it was not so intense. But I knew about Jesus, I knew what, uh, what is God and everything. But uh, it happened like uh, when I was in my school days, when I was in maybe class 9 or 10th. So in, in that time, um, I was feeling left out I, uh, among my peers and among my friends. And I was feeling left out. And there will be many instances where I, some, I had some problems, teenage problems, where I could not tell my friends, I could not tell my parents. And that problems that kept in accumulating in my heart and that there was no one to reach out. And at some point that I might explode, that I might break down. At, at that point, I've, I just prayed and I've come to know, I, and I, I felt Jesus. And I just prayed that Jesus, that whatever you have, and just take me out of the situation. Show me that there, that there is a real Jesus. And at that point, I felt surreal. And from that day onwards, it's by God's grace, every time, whenever I have a problem, and whenever I have, I pray, I get an answer. But maybe it may be not the best answer for the solution for my problems. It may be not a soothing answer, but definitely I have an answer from God. So that is my uh, uh, what what do I take my experience with Jesus. Now, Jibin, you said in your ninth grade or that teenage years of your life, you were succumbed to a lot of pressures yeah. and you faced a lot of problems. What are some of the challenges that youngsters in that age group particularly face? For me, like when I was in ninth or 10th, it was the age when that, from the child I'm being a youngster. It's a transition period. So there is a lot happening in this. So we are all very curious as a, as a teenager to try out everything in this world. For us, everything is curious. What people do, what uh, others do, and what is happening in the world. We are curious to try it out. Or we are pressurized from our friends to try out different things. So at that point of time, you, you yourself are not sure what to do, what is right. And sometimes you, you succumb to that circumstances and you end up doing some things, which you later regret. And, and once you regret, you'll be feeling very low that 
you met uh, your friends you when you look back you don't have your friends or you you cannot ha you don't have anyone to help you to come out of the situation and uh, generally speaking uh, you cannot share everything with your parents so as if uh, for me i couldn't share that with my parents because i was having a fear what what would they tell and what how would they think if their son is like that it is a very bad experience so i couldn't share with anyone so at that point of time i took it to myself i was i just kept it in with, uh, within myself but that was a burden so uh, when you keep it in within yourself it it keeps on being a burden and it keeps on succumbing and and one point of time you you'll be you'll uh, be forced to break down or you'll feel like yes i might not survive so at that point jesus will come in everyone's life there is some point there is a break even point when god will come to your life that uh, we just have to hope and pray for that now jibit what would you say to youngsters out there today facing these problems problems that they can't share with their peers problems that they cannot share with their parents what would you say is the first step to do uh, to all the youngsters and the children out there at this age or any age when you feel that you have a problem you cannot share with anyone i say that you take it to the press you t speak to jesus speak to him as a friend speak to him as someone you know and you just pray god what i should do i mean this just pray and just keep on praying and there will be a point there will be a definite answer but you may not feel that sir, that you may you cannot uh, say that jesus will come down from heaven and he will come and tell you uh, do this son no you might have an in, inside feeling there will be someone inside you telling what to do or what not to do and maybe it will be some of your uh, friends someone will come to you and you'll feel yes you will have a positive response but thing is that you are, you have to maintain a relay when you feel that you are in the deepest the lowest point in your life just close your eyes just pray just ke keep it a routine maybe and read the bible and make it a routine maybe every day maybe a 5 minutes of bible and just a 5 minutes prayer just pray intensely and i am sure i'll can give you assurance god will be god will reply to your prayers but it is that it is just a patience it is just like if you pray today you cannot expect that god to come today and answer you it, it's a, it's a, god is testing you out so it takes a little time so we need to be patient as well to get replies from god has there been any time in your spiritual experience or your spiritual life so far where where you have got impatient or where you have had moments where you've shaken a little bit in your faith definitely there have been many instances and i feel that a uh, christian life or normal christian life is like it's a ups and down and at at every junction you at every problems i faced at some point you will feel that down you will feel impatient it's just that it's not it's that uh, when you have your faith it's just reduced and you know the faith that he comes in your life and you will feel impatient and you feel god why i'm not getting answer to this problem god why i'm in this problem or why i and you reply and there have been many instances and even uh, truly speaking even i have i mean i've told uh, just told in my anger uh, in a anger tone i've spoken to god jesus why don't you reply why, i need an answer and there have been se several instances and and but every time i get a reply but it be delayed or extended i get a reply i get a something i feel as solace in my life so and as as a, as a christian i feel you will have this instances you will always feel impatient in, throughout your life but it is just how do you overcome it so how do you overcome it jibin first of all to overcome something is you need to understand that every problem what do you there is two aspect to a problem what you think of a problem and what do you th what is your expectant time time frame that you want it for if you have an immediate problem as human tendency we want that problem to end soon we don't want misery in our life we want it to end soon but we have to re realize the first step is self realization that every problem what we think is not that it is not the end it is what god thinks and we have to be confident yes god can take me through this problem and there is definitely a way that god can act in my life and once i have this strong belief it it keeps you moving and then you have to indulge in prayer prayer is the best uh, best thing you can get for your problems or it is the best communication thing you can have with god and once you keep praying you will feel that you will have a more energy then you have to read the bible then you and uh, another thing is that there is no point in like if you have a problem you keep mum you try to reach out to maximum people you try to be as 
cheerful as possible. And when you interact more with people, and when you, come, when you do the prayer, when you read the Bible, and all these elements, it actually gives you an happiness. It gives you inner peace. So that is the remedy, I feel. You have to be in touch with God, even to your good times, even to your bad times. It's that I feel, sometimes even myself, personally, I feel, when we are in a good, when our life is going good, and when we have all the things going sound, we don't find that much time to pray to God, or we don't fi find that much time to thank Him, or, not, or the, nothing like that. And we feel like, yeah, it's fine, by God's grace I'm good, and just we feel and we lay back. But that attitude can lead to a problem. And I feel personally, when you are in a when you are in the problem, you come to know about God, and I and I want to tell everyone that we have to be in touch with God, be it in good times or be it bad times. Make him your best friend, make him your your best friend, and make him the closest person you can share everything. And once you keep a communication, you'll definitely have a solution for everything, and it will give it will make your life in a positive manner. Jivin, we've had several young guests on our show and a lot of them have told me it isn't easy living out your faith as a youngster believing in Jesus. How has your faith been, you know, living your faith in this world where there's a lot of demands on youngsters? It's very, uh, what they're told is absolutely right. It's very difficult to be, to stick to what you are. And in this, you know, in this period of time, when you are, uh, when there is more people who are, who are more children, so more youngsters, they tend to go into the worldly ways. And when you are among them, you are constantly pressurized. That you are constantly pressurized. That they look into your life and they feel, yes, th uh, we all are very happy. We are all we all are very merry. There is no problem in our life. See this this person's life. He is claiming he's with God, and every day he has a problem. He is uh, he's unhappy. He is uh, with uh, he is having problems. He is uh, what? And every time he uh, he don't he don't, he doesn't in, indulge in things. What we do? So at that point, you will be left alone from the so society, and many friends will leave you. They will they will feel that you are uh, they will feel they will curse you, or they will they will left leave you out from their group. That is very common, and as I feel, uh, I've faced many instances in my college life when I, uh, when I was in a room and I was sharing my room with three four people, and there if I if I I couldn't pray like if I could pray like ten minutes a day, they will be looking at they will be imagining yes why this guy, why this person is praying and it's like an astonishment to them that what I do and what I behave and s some point of time there is a point the uh, point in my life when I have been like broken down or when I have thought, yes, it's enough, I'm done. And I've been going in the worldly ways, but there is definitely, we, when we go into the worldly ways, always Jesus will send, will give you a second chance to come back. You need to grab it with both hands. And the thing is that I tell to everyone, stick to your ways. Let the word despise you, let everyone despise you, your friends, your relatives, maybe your parents also will not be, will not give you 100%, they will not stick to you, but be confident. Say I'm with Jesus. I'm 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 going to be with Jesus. Whatever comes, and once you have that faith in God, and once you are you stand by your ways, people will change, and you might not expect it in one day, one week, one month, but when you keep on trying, there will be changes. People will be t will be amazed by what you are what you are going through or what you are. And there will be people in my life also. Now it has not been a big extent or many people, but if few people have realized yes. There is a God. Yeah, there is a something there. So, and there have been many positive responses from them. Jibin, has any person come up to you, seeing your faith and asking you about how to know Jesus? Yes, definitely. Um, in my college days, uh, I was facing many, uh, I told you that, that the people around me was, they were into worldly, but it was a college life. It's like a freedom from your home. As I studied my college days in India. So it's a freedom for your home, everything. So you are, you are in a world, you want to try out everything. So at that point of time, when I had some difficulties, I used to go sit alone in my terrace. There was no one there. I used to pray. I used to just pray or talk. I used to uh, pour out my heart. And my, one of my roommates, he started seeing this. But he was very curious what I was doing. So he felt that, at first he felt that I was mad or I was crazy. But then gradually when he, he came, he, he, he started coming there, he's sitting beside me, he started hearing my talks. Then he came to know that, yes. And every time, 
whatever if I have problem or anything I will be down in my, in my grades or in my exams. But I, everyone will be down. But I will be very confident. I will tell them, yes, by God. God will take me through this, I am sure. And they will be amazed by that. And when the results come, they will be totally amazed. And that roommate, and he, has, uh, he was a person, he never used to go to church and all. He, but because he were in his home, he was not trained or they weren't going. And by seeing my life, and I used to tell him, and he was from a poor background, and he, he, he had loans for his education. The college, he was, he was taking loans. And he was in a big need of money. And he was in, ten, he was in a tense time going through. Then I was with him. And I feel it's God's, it's God's plan that I was with him. And I was with him through the four years. And I always used to tell him, you have to be in touch with God. And God, you will, you will see wonders in your life. There will be a t- point of time in your life where you will tell to me that, yes, you are right. God is working wonders. And I can tell you today he is in a very good position. And whenever I, I call him, I tell him this, yes, you, you, do you remember? I used to tell you this. And he, he, is, he accepts the fact and now he is with God and he's having good relation with God. And that I feel is a small thing I have done. And uh, many other instances, now, uh, like now what we, uh, by God's grace, we are into the scam ministry. So what we do is we, re, we go to different places. We go around four to five days a week and we go to different places. To, we go to the labor camps. We meet the laborers and we, we tell them about God. We tell them about Jesus. We tell them about what Jesus can do. There, as you know, these peoples, this, uh, it's like uh, they are away from the mainstream. People do not concentrate on them. They are the lowest class. They are the workers. So for them, it's like what they earn is very less and their families is back home. And whatever they have the problems here, whatever the tensions they are, and there is no one to go and share their pain. There is no one to go and give them some, yes, relief. So they find relief in alcohol. They find relief in the worldly matters. So what we try to do in our small way, we try to reach out to these people. And in our, in our very small manner, and we have been reaching out to many people. And by God's grace, every, the, we are seeing a small changes in all our places. There are many coming to Christ. There are many people who have been into alcoholism, into uh, different things. They are coming to Christ. They are praying. They are bringing more souls. So it's a positive sign in my life, I feel. It's definitely positive to hear you see, hear and see and know that you, as young as you are, are making changes in the world around you, Jibin. Jibin, is there a person that you look up to in your spiritual relationship? Definitely. There is, uh, there is one person that is, I call him brother uncle, is the venerable prophet. And this is a ministry I'm going through. And always I look up to, I look up to him from my young days. And the thing that is, astonishes me every time is that whatever he does, whatever he, he's a person who thinks like what I can do for God more, more. Every day he has that thought. Every day he keeps on thinking more things for God and he does it to the utmost perfection. So when we look up into a person, we also feel, yes, we also feel compelled to do things. But we are not able to achieve that much as him or we are not able to reach what perfection he reached. But we are always compelled and we are, we always, when we always look up to him, we need to act. We need to do things what we do. And there have been several instances we have failed. We have been gone back. We have, we have, we have not progressed much. But, and definitely and his prayers and his commitment to God. It's not, I can tell you it's 100%. What he does to God is 100%. And that has been a lesson to my life because many times uh, when I do things for God, I, th- I don't think that, yes, uh, this is enough. I feel, yeah, yeah, it's okay. By my worldly ma- manner and my worldly brain, I think and I do. But what I've been learning from him is, is by monitoring his life is whatever you do for God, do it with utmost perfection. Do it with utmost self-belief. Yes, I have done my 100%. And when you do things for God, you, God will work wonders in your life and there will be more and more ways in you can work for God. So that is the, uh, the person whom I look up to in my spiritual life. So Jibin, we're going to conclude our show with the last question to you. What would you like to share with the young people out there from all the experiences that you've shared with us? What would you like to tell them to make a change in their lives? To all the youngsters out there who, who, are, who is hearing me, I would like to say one thing is when you feel that you don't have anyone in your life, when you feel you are in the lowest point in your life, I say you spare a few minutes for God. 
you read, read the Bible or just sense, spend some time in prayer. And I can tell you, you can, it's the best help you can get from anywhere in the world is Jesus. You won't have any other help. Maybe your friends will, they won't be there for you. Maybe your family won't be there for you. But there will be always a person, Jesus. But thing is that when you are with Jesus or when you are with Jesus, there are definitely going to be hard obstacles. There are going to be instances in your life when you feel that, why have I have chosen Jesus? So at that point, you have to realize is that what God has planned for you, not what you have planned. You need to have patience. You need to have stupendous faith in God. And I say that there are many people around you. You might not go to, if you, uh, you will feel that, yes, what change I can do? What I can tell you is you will have definite many people in, if you are going to a college. You will have many students there who come from different problems, who are, face, who are facing different difficulties in life. I say that you spend some time with them. Share about Jesus. And once, you've, once you keep on sharing about Jesus, and once you keep praying about Jesus, you might not be able to bring changes in many people's life, but at least if you are able to bring change in one person's life, I feel you have done your job in this world. Thank you so much, Jivin, for those wonderful words that you've given our youngsters. Thank you for joining us on our show, Thank The you. Why Jesus Show. I pray and sincerely hope that you continue to make changes in the lives of many more, especially the youth out Thank there. You. It's a privilege. Thank you. Thank you, friends, for joining us once again on another episode of Why Jesus. Please stay tuned for another episode, same place, same time, next week. Until then, this is Vijay bidding you farewell. Mm -hmm.